All right, all right. Hello, good people. How you all doing today? This is Junior, and I want to welcome you all back to another episode of the Daily Digital Design Show. So today we are going to be talking about something called Web 3.0, uh, or just Web 3. If you haven't heard of it, it's no big deal because it's really not something that's getting pushed out there as much as stuff like NFTs uh, or the metaverse or whatever. But NFTs, the metaverse, cryptocurrency, they're really kind of all built around Web 3.0. So in this episode, we'll be touching on what exactly it is, how it will change the future of the internet forever. So stay tuned. All right, so Web 3.0. Um, for us to really understand what Web 3.0 is, we kind of have to go back into history a little bit, uh, back with Web 2.0 and Web 1.0. So when computers first became a, a, a major thing in people's lives, um, there was the invention of what we call the internet. Not exactly sure, I think the internet came out probably 80s, 90s or whatever, but it wasn't really mainstream till we got somewhere in between the 99s and the 2000s, right? Um, and when that happened, we jumped into Web 1.0. So Web 1.0 uh, was really all just about being able to read and write. Basically read and write, share information over the internet um, across the entire world, across the entire network, the connected um, network of computers and stuff like that. So think about email basically, right? Uh, when you write an email, you're able to just you know, simply write one. Uh, I'm not sure if back then they were able to drop in images and stuff like that, but just think about just the text for right now. Um, you're able to drop in text into an email, send it across, you know, wherever um, to get to um, who you needed to get to. And then you're able to get uh, receive an email back and you'll be able to read it as well. Think about also if you go to um, Google and you search something, uh, Google wasn't around back then, but you're able to view information on different websites. So think about um, articles from newspapers and stuff like that. You're able to click on an article, read it, and other people, other companies and stuff like that are able to write articles, write that information uh, and store that data onto the network. So that was really what Web 1.0 was all about. Web 1.0 was just being able to write information over the internet and share it across uh, the entire world pretty much. From there, we jumped into Web 2.0. Now, Web 2.0 came about right around the time with Facebook's big boom. Um, I would say, geez, 2005-ish, six, seven, eight, something like that. And that allowed for individuals to be able to connect with each other on a different level. So we are able to, or we were able to do more than just put information on the internet, have somebody read it and then somebody else put some more information on the internet and somebody else read it as well. Uh, we were able to do things called blogging. So on an article, we were able to comment on it. We were able to interact with one another and share our thoughts pretty much, not exactly in real time, but you know, pretty much in real time. When we began sharing our thoughts with one another, that's when social media came about and we were able to uh, basically share our thoughts in real time. We're able to post stuff, post images, post music, post videos and stuff like that. So Web 2.0 was really just about how we were able to connect with one another uh, on a different level inside of the internet. So again, think about social media, um, how we were able to go on Facebook, go on Instagram, share stuff in real time. Uh, think about blogging, how we were able to go to a blog, read it, we were able to comment on it. Think about even YouTube. On YouTube, they have comments as well. Uh, and they were able to comment on videos, share videos and all that good stuff. So now you have the web 1.0 where you have all the information stored on the internet for people to read. Then you have web 2.0 where the, all that information is now being read. It can also be commented on and shared across many different platforms. And now we jump into this web 3.0 world, which actually brings back ownership to all of that content. <clears throat> 
So say for example, if you have a YouTube video, you create your YouTube video on your cell phone or on an actual camera, and then you upload it onto YouTube, right? On YouTube servers. So once it's on YouTube servers, it lives there forever. But think about it. What happens when YouTube goes down? What happens when YouTube accidentally gets hacked or they go out of business or whatever? What happens to your video? Well, your video actually gets lost. You know, at that point, YouTube owns it. If you put music on Spotify, that music is now lost. Of course, if you keep a version of it on your computer, uh, but many people don't have, you have a lot of videos. Many people don't have that much storage on their computer to keep it. So they have to have, have a backup hard drive or just delete it all together. It's on YouTube, right? It's gonna be there forever. I think YouTube has videos from like 20 years ago that is still on YouTube servers. Um, but again, what happens when YouTube goes down or if YouTube goes down, will your video still live there? Well, it will. You just won't be able to access it, you know? Um, so really what Web 3.0 does is bring back ownership using the blockchain into who owns what. So no longer are you able to just post on Facebook and Facebook comes around and says, hey, this doesn't fit our guidelines. This doesn't fit our regulations. So we're taking this down. What? <laughs> you know, like what, what, what do you even mean right now? I posted this. I wanted people to see it. How are you going to tell me what I can and cannot do with my own content? Same with Instagram. Instagram, you put a picture out there, you know, and Instagram doesn't like it. They are able to just tell you, hey, we don't want this on our website. Take it off. So what really happens with Web 3.0 is removing that middleman between you, your content and who sees your content. It actually brings back ownership into who does what with your own stuff. And you have all full capability and control to be able to do that. And the reason why this is so powerful, the reason why this is so big right now, if you think about the music industry, the music industry has a bunch of middlemen, right? So take you yourself and you create some music, you have to go through, I don't know, record label, production company, um, streaming platform, all, way, all those different um, avenues to take before you even get to the end user. So if you put your music on Spotify, uh, you'll be able to share your music with people, but Spotify now takes a cut from it. And if Spotify doesn't like it, they can take it down. And if Spotify ever goes down, your music goes away. So what happens with Web 3.0 is that you don't need a record label anymore. You don't need Spotify anymore. You can put your music on the blockchain and allow people to access, allow people to use it directly from there and you get a cut. Well, you get 100% of the cut from that stream, from that music, from the content that you actually created. So again, just to do a quick recap, Web 1.0 is just about providing content over the internet, allowing people to be able to read it, you write it, somebody else reads it, and then from there, Web 2.0 takes whatever that was read on you know, the internet, on the Web 1.0, Web 2.0 jumps in to allow people to interact with you on that content. So again, they can use it as a blog. If they, it's an article, they can comment on it. It's a video on YouTube, they can comment on it. They can also share it. If it's a um, post on Instagram or Facebook, um, they can see it in real time and share it and all that stuff. Um, and then, then again, last part about it is Web 3.0, where Web 3.0 actually allows you to monetize your own content without having to go through a middleman for it. So it's really all about your content. What happens with what you put on the internet? And in my opinion, as we are getting closer to a more uh, decentralized system, I feel like Web 3.0 will really give us a good boost in the right direction for that. All right, so let me know what you guys think about that. Uh, <clears throat> again, if you haven't heard of Web 3.0 and this is really a uh, eye opener for you, feel free to reach out to me on all of my social media channels, uh, junior underscore events, so uh, all the way across the board. Um, and yeah, so until next time, you guys take care and I'll see you later.